Hello, today we're going to talk about Structure 3.2.12. Um, this is an HL only topic. In this one, we are putting together all of the different spectroscopy <laughs> techniques. So we're putting together um, mass spectroscopy, infrared spectroscopy, and proton NMR spectroscopy, putting it all together. So essentially, you're going to be gathering different information from different spectra and putting it together. Sometimes you will have to use techniques to find the empirical formula. Um, so sometimes this will be mass data or mass percent data to calculate the empirical formula. Um, the mass spectra is going to give us information about the overall size of the compound and the size of the different fragments that can be formed when bonds break in the molecule. The um, infrared spectra is going to give us information about the specific types of bonds that are present. So whether they are, you know, CH single bonds, C double bond O, um, CO single bonds, whatever the different types of bonds that are present in the molecule. And then the um, H1 NMR, the proton NMR spectroscopy is going to give us information about the hydrogen environments, the number of hydrogens, um, the what's, what's next to it nearby. And between all of these, we should be able to figure out the overall structure of the compound that's being tested. All right, so let's work through a big example. We have an unknown compound. We've done um, mass analysis and determined that it's 85.6% carbon by mass and 14.4% hydrogen by mass. Your strategy with empirical formula is always to pretend the percents are grams. Like if you have a 100 gram total sample, 85.6% is 85.6 grams. And then I'm going to convert grams of carbon to moles using the molar mass of carbon. I got 7.13 moles. Do the same thing for hydrogen. Hydrogen's mass is one, like this. And once I have the moles, I can divide by the smallest number to get the mole ratio. So for every one carbon, there are two hydrogens. So my empirical formula is CH2. So continuing on, the mass spectrum of the compound from the previous question is shown here. Deduce the molecular formula of the compound. Now, if I have um, my empirical formula was CH2, that means that the mass of the empirical formula is 14. So one carbon, two hydrogens makes 14. I know from the mass spectra that the largest molecular ion there has a mass of 84. So that's going to be the same as the molar mass of the total molecule. So I can take the 84 and divide by the 14 to figure out that it is six times bigger than the empirical formula. So six times larger than CH2 is C6H12. This is my molecular formula. Then it says, is the molecule likely to contain a CH3 group? And explain your answer. This is a great chance to use your data booklet. If you go to section 22 in your data booklet, um, it has some sample mass spectra um, fragments. And one of those is CH3. And a CH3 group has a mass of 15. Well, there's no 15 peak on here. It's missing. So we'd say, no, the molecule is not likely to contain a CH3 group because there is no peak at 15 on our mass spectrum. OK, so we already know that our chemical formula, molecular formula, is C6H12. And we know that there are no CH3 groups. So now we say um, the IR spectrum shows one absorption close to 2900 wave number. Um, so if you use your data booklet, now we're in section um, 20 for the IR data. We can see 2900 is probably referring to um, the CH for alkanes, um, alkenes or arenes. It's 
alkanes, alkenes, or arenes. And um, it could, I mean, in theory, be an OH for carboxylic acids, but we don't have any O's in our molecular formula. So it doesn't make sense that it would be referring to that one. So it says state can be deduced that there's definitely CH single bonds um, present in the molecule. Then it says use the H1 NMR spectrum uh, to deduce the molecular structure of the compound. So now if we're looking at our proton NMR spectrum, there is only one peak. And so that means there's only one hydrogen environment. That means all 12 of those hydrogens are in the same relative environment to one another. So that means it's most likely going to be a ring because that makes it completely symmetrical. Let me actually draw it a little bit nicer. Um, I'll draw out the carbons so it's easy to see. So there's our six carbons. If each of those carbons has two hydrogens attached, then we have 12 hydrogens total. And none of those are CH3 groups. And we definitely have the CH for alkanes, alkenes, arenes. We're also seeing that all of the hydrogens are in the same environment. They're all um, you know, close to other hydrogens, but they're all the same relative to one another. You could also look at the chemical shift itself and see that this is about 1.4, just about, which refers to in your data booklet in section 21, the CH2 next to other carbons so that all fits. And it really just takes some trial and error um, using data for all of the different techniques to put together to figure out this whole, um, the whole structure. Typically when you'll see questions about this type of content, you're going to see the question broken down into like an A, B, C, D, different parts leading you towards that final answer, um, which really helps because otherwise these questions are like, huge puzzles that you have to solve gathering information from all of the different um, spectral data.